This is Twit. Gentlemen, I'm going to ask Curtis to take the lead on this one because uh, it's just happening today and it's pretty bad. Here's what we know. We know that in the UK, a massive ransomware attack has hit more than 70,000 systems, including some very vital emergency health systems. Curtis, can you tell me a little bit about Eternal Blue? Well, Eternal Blue is a vulnerability that was first reported to the public as part of the Shadow Brokers NSA data dump back in April. So this is really one of the, the early instances of one of the NSA hacking tools being used as part of a massive, massive malware attack. Now, as, as Padre mentioned, we've had reports of well over 70,000 systems being attacked globally. Now, the bulk of the systems attacked so far are in Russia with both Europe and Asia also seeing some fairly heavy hits. Africa, at last report, is starting to see systems being hit. And yes, there are some systems in North America, although at this point, we lag far behind the rest of the world in total number of systems being hit. Now, the thing that's really gotten everyone's attention here is not the sheer number of systems being attacked, although that's pretty impressive. It's which systems are being attacked. In the UK, one of the major victims is the National Health Service. And at last report, over 16 different local operations, think of these as hospitals with their associated doctor's offices and clinics have been hit. And in many of those, because of standard protocol, when something like ransomware hits, systems have been shut down. And that includes things like the systems that monitor patient care, that monitor critical conditions for patients. And so we're already hearing some, some fairly heart-wrenching stories of everything from surgery that's uh, deemed uh, elective being pushed off all the way to things like emergency cases being routed to different hospitals and even nurses and doctors sticking their heads out of doors and shouting down the halls when patients are going into critical situations because the systems that normally monitor their conditions just are offline now. In addition, things like Spain's national telephone system, Telefonica, has been hit, and many of their systems are offline. Now, it's important to look, I think, at what's being hit uh, with this vulnerability. And the fact is that what was being hit is the Microsoft server message block, specifically server message block 1.0 server. Um, we, we've got a real opportunity here because our own Lou Maresca well, he knows more than a little bit about this. Luke, can, can you give us just a little bit of a picture as to what SMB v1 does in the context of, of Windows? Absolutely. So yeah, like like Curtis said, SMB is what they call service message block, and it's just it's a network file sharing protocol that they developed way back in Windows 2000 that essentially uses different layers of your network layer. layer that either uses uh, the NetBIOS transport or or TCP/IP. And allows you to kind of connect between um, another machine to basically share data. And, you know, most of the time, this particular protocol, obviously, there's I think it's on version 3.0 right now. And in fact, multiple versions of Windows support the different versions of the protocol. So, for instance, Windows 10 can actually you can actually enable the version one ver version of the of the protocol itself. But in, in general, it's got multiple layers of security. It's got what they call user level and share level security. And both of them are actually pass the passwords that go between them are actually encrypted, um, and uh, you know it's basically a challenge or response type of um, uh, authentication method. Um, but again, this all depends on the version of the protocol how this is handled. So the version one um, obviously has this particular exploit in it, and um, and now they're exploiting it if people have it enabled on their on their OS by default in some of the operating systems it's enabled. Um, most you can actually shut it down. So it's actually interesting that they found this this exploit on some of the latest OSs. 
Yeah, we, we do know going through some of the, the charts that uh, various um, CERT groups have put up that it does affect all the way up through the latest versions of Windows 10. And I have read in a number of places that it's actually on by default uh, as recently as some versions of Windows 10. To me, the, the amazing thing, though, is that Microsoft was very proactive in patching this vulnerability. The patch for this was actually released to the public um, a couple of weeks ahead of that shadow broker's NSA data dump. So any company or any individual that is in the practice of updating their systems, especially on one that is designated a critical system vulnerability, as this one was, shouldn't have a real problem. Now, it's also important to note that this is not the actual ransomware. What we're talking about in terms of this vulnerability is the transport and infection method for the ransomware. The ransomware is, is a variant of something that, that we've seen a number of times before. The difference in this particular infection is that we have this amazingly effective transport mechanism that, as it turns out, was developed by our own government. Uh, what we don't know, as far as I'm aware, is how long this vulnerability existed before it was patched. In other words, was the vulnerability in SMB1 something that has been there since the very first iteration, or was it something that was inadvertently introduced in a much later uh, series of upgrades? I'm not aware of anyone who thus far has been able to tell us that. Um, Lou, you were involved in a lot of application development, and this whole thing with uh, the non-patching leads to something that, that I don't know whether you've got some insight on, but I'd, I'd be interested in your take. And that is the notion of depending upon customers to actually apply updates. Do you have any kind of, of rule of thumb? I mean, obviously, there's no update that you can depend on being applied to 100% of the systems out there, whether we're talking about operating system or application. But do you find that the majority of users at least are applying updates these days? Yeah, I think that's a really good question. And uh, the answer to that, to me, in my particular scenario, is no. Um, in fact, um, you know, when you have these rich clients, these thick clients, and these applications being installed on these machines, you know, kind of what we call the old legacy style of application deployment, where you have a machine has got an OS put on it, and you then you bring down these binary bits and actually install them as executables on the machine is kind of the old style. Now, obviously, the cloud uh, services and the uh, SOA service-oriented architectures are kind of out there. And people are you know, using web apps and uh, more lightweight type things um, that don't necessarily require binaries installing on your machine. So a lot of the old legacy styles, um, you know, need to be patched sometimes. If there's vulnerabilities found, they are they require somebody to go and run an update on their service or their application in order to get those updates. And even if you put automatic updates on things including on your cell phone, these things are binaries installed on your cell phone. You know, if you don't have automatic updates enabled or you don't go check the store for when an application is updated or when the OS is updated, if you don't uh, actually do that, you're not going to get the updates, which means that includes your security patches. And that creates vulnerabilities and holes in the system. And, you know, you'll start to see these, these kind of like bell curve graphs that show the distribution of how many people actually get the update and only systems that kind of force the update, like some of the new operating systems like, uh, you know, iOS operating system as well as Windows 10 are starting to force updates, especially around security vulnerabilities um, uh, to come down to the system. Now, again, enterprises can still block that if they want to, if they make that decision. Uh, which is not always the best decision, but um, sometimes they want to regulate what kind of bits that kind of over, come over the wire and how they affect those systems. Um, and they're not as containerized as they would hope. So I think, you know, and again, applications sometimes depend on functionality that might be changed by some of the updates. So I think, you know, there's it's, it's a slippery slope because you don't know when or how you want to take these updates. But when you have something like this, 
that could be an ep- it could basically spread like wildfire throughout the system uh, and that they had a patch right away and you're not getting that patch because you have turned off all these functionality you know that's just negligence on the people who own the systems unfortunately now now is it always negligence on the people who own the system no um sometimes it should be i to me it's up to the platform uh to sometimes make decisions um you know especially if it can cause some data damaging and 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 privacy issues security issues but again you know all different co- each company does it differently uh you know as well as mac and osx and with from apple is also does it does it a little differently as well so you know it's all dependent on the company and how it's implemented from that from that delivery method